Hey, welcome. Welcome everyone. Excited to be with you all today for this webinar, Strategic Leadership for Stronger Workplace Culture. I'm Sierra Pratt, the Senior Marketing Manager at Star Staffing and your host today. A very warm welcome to our speaker, Christy Angler. Good morning, Christy. We'll learn a little bit more. Good morning. We'll learn a little bit more about Christy shortly. But first up, if you missed last month, last month's HR Summit, you can still view the recordings. It's available only until next month, so be sure to take advantage of that. You can find them at starhr.com slash HR Summit 2023, or feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to access those recordings. I know quite a few of you on this webinar joined us um, at the summit, so feel free to share any top takeaways. I'm glad that so many of you could be with us. There still is time if you missed it. And something to look forward to, there will be monthly webinars with trending topics each month this year. So the next session will be coming in May with the focus on performance and career coaching. I will have those details shortly, so stay tuned. Uh, and we do have June 7th booked with Ray Ingen on how to create leadership language that works. In this webinar, you'll learn tactics to support engagement and retention, how to be a more effective communicator, tips for improving culture and performance, and registration will be available for both at starhr.com slash webinars, so you can look for that coming soon. Okay, and this webinar is pre-approved for one SHRM R or HRCI credit. Uh, those codes will be given at the end of this webinar, so just look for those at the very end, and we'll um, get those to you, and you can get your credits in, and it's for one, uh, again, one credit. Okay, and the session is being recorded, and slides will also be made available after the webinar, so you should be getting that follow-up most likely by tomorrow. Okay, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Christy. Christy Engler has been a human resources practitioner for 20 plus years with a focus on small and family-owned businesses. Christy has worked with business owners across a variety of industries and understands the unique needs of entrepreneurs and how to best partner with them to achieve people-first outcomes and grow businesses. Christy is a graduate of The Ohio State University and Keller Graduate School of Management. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and a Master's of Human Resource Management, as well as the SPHR and SHRM CPU certifications. She's an active member of the HR Unite community and writes a blog titled Living in the Gray, designed to inspire HR professionals. And Christy is also part of a collaborative book that I'm sure she'll be sharing more about as well. Welcome, Christy. Thanks, Sierra. Can everybody hear me? Oh, there's my good friend, Carmen. She's, she's on today from, from Columbus, Ohio. Awesome. All right, let me... Uh... Sierra, are you going to give me the power? Yes, so I stopped my <laughs> share, so you should have the option now. Perfect. All right, that's fantastic. Well, I wanna say thank you so much to Sierra and to everybody at, at Star Staffing for inviting me today. Really excited to be here with you and spending time talking with my fellow HR pros. It really fills my cup and, and really gets me going. So I hope I can uh, do the same for you and get you inspired. So I want to talk about today is why it's a new day for HR. I'm sure a lot of us have seen and continue to see what I'm going to call some of the old school outdated practices, the, the world of personnel, if you will. Some people will, will remember that far back. There's still some things going on today that are a little bit concerning. And so I felt the need to address this in uh, my contribution to People Fusion that Sierra mentioned, which was uh, published in January. It's a collaborative effort, so it's multiple authors, multiple different topics. Um, it was a really great experience, and I feel like it's a great cross-section of themes and ideas and perspectives, and I really hope that you'll check it out just because I think it's it, it's really good content. But for me, I really wanted to speak to the, the hearts and minds of, of my fellow HR pros and say, let's see how we can do even better. 
So a little bit about me, Sierra gave a great intro, which I really, really appreciate. I've been doing this for going on 20 years now. And one of the things that I pride myself on is that I am a practitioner. I am just like all of you who are in the trenches, who are doing this work every day. And quite frankly, I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I love helping employees. I love trying to make work better for people. I feel like work's the one thing that we all have in common at the end of the day, right? Everybody has to make a living. Everybody has to pay bills, got to put food on the table. So work is, is something that most of us share in, in some way, shape or form. So I love it. I feel like it's a, it's a calling and, and purpose for me. I have pr worked primarily with small and medium-sized businesses. And when I mean small, I mean tiny and, and, and little, little businesses, the businesses that don't get a lot of traction and a lot of attention, um, but they're still there, they're important. And you know, quite frankly, there's a huge cross-section of our population that works for a what, what is defined as a, a small business. So, but they definitely have their challenges and they definitely have their uniqueness. I've told a lot of business owners over the years, you would make more money just putting cameras in and making a reality show than what you actually do because of the, you know, dynamics and particularly when they are family owned businesses and the whole family is there. It's priceless. It's absolutely priceless. It, it would be a fantastic show. Um, I've, I've wanted to be a fly on the wall at some of the Thanksgivings, you know, some of some of the clients that I've worked with because they, their dynamic is just super interesting to try to be family and, and working together. And I've worked a lot with entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, as, as many of you know, if you've worked with entrepreneurs, you know that they're a unique breed of, of individual and it, it can be really difficult. Um, you know, they, they have wonderful vision and passion and, and energy usually around what they do, um, which makes them, you know, fantastic. And, then they want to change everything on, on a dime. And so that's why we have to be there to, to help them. So it's been, it's been a unique experience working that closely. I consider myself a very people first HR practitioner. There are a lot of times where I feel like policies and, and some things have to be thrown out the window to take care of the people. And so that's something that I talk about, I feel very strongly about, and that is a huge theme of what we're gonna talk about today. I know a lot of people disagree with me and a lot of, of practitioners struggle with this. And a lot of it, I think, is because their business leaders don't grasp it yet. They don't get it, um, that, that this can be done. And, and you can have that balance of being compliant and, and taking care of your people. And, and it's absolutely achievable. Uh, for me, the things that are, are most important in my life, um, faith, my family, Ohio State football is a, a another part of a, of a religion for me. I've already got my countdown going on on my wall um, until kickoff in September. And uh, fitness. I'm three weeks away from my first half marathon. Um, a lot of people say, why would you do that to yourself? Well, the picture on the right is um, me and my very good friend, Heather. She's also a, a fellow HR practitioner in leadership development. And in 2019, she beat breast cancer. And she said, to celebrate, I think we should, I think we should run a marathon. What do you say when your best friend says, I think we should run a marathon to celebrate the fact that I beat cancer? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, we should. We should absolutely do that. And so really for the first time in my life, um, in, in 40 years, it clicked. Running finally started working for me. And um, so that picture right there was from last spring. She and I did a quarter marathon here in Columbus. And um, so I'm doing my first half here in, in just a few weeks. But um, she's really been, you know, inspirational to me on, on so many levels. But, you know, she, she beat that with, with just grace and, um, you know, the, the power of the Lord. And she, she's just a phenomenal human being. And so that, that really kind of got me into uh, into that. And then she and I are also members of the Orange Theory Fitness cult. I don't know if anybody else is. It's phenomenal. Uh, my good friend Carmen, who's on today, she, she is also a member. Um, I've been going for almost six years. It has been absolutely tremendous and, and really will, will change your life. If, if you're looking for something like that, I, I highly recommend it. 
The other pictures here are just of my wonderful family that I love to show off. Um, my eldest daughter, Avery, and I at um, OSU football game a couple years ago. And then my family, my husband, James, and my daughters, Avery and Emily, took them to uh, Disney a couple years ago for Christmas. And we did a whole pirate thing themed because uh, we, we really are into pirates. So um, an interesting thing about my family that I will talk about here in a little bit is that my daughter Emily has special needs. And so I wanna talk about that and kind of how that's affected me as a practitioner, as an employee, and what other things may be going on in the lives of your people that sometimes we overlook. So if you're like me throughout my career, I've seen a lot of people come and go, right? You, you've seen a lot of employees, Unfortunately, what I've seen too often are employees coming and going for the wrong reasons. I knew an individual for several years. His name was Dan. He was an awesome employee. He was a fantastic customer service person. He was really good at dealing with wild up customers, you know, people who got themselves, you know, all, all worked up about something. Not everybody's good at that, right? He was really good at it. He was, he was very good at it. Um, he was a single dad, had a young son. He and his former girlfriend were working through the co-parenting thing. I've never done that, but I can imagine what, what it's like. Many people have, have had that, that experience. So Dan was not a morning person. So being in his seat by 8 a.m. was nearly impossible for the poor guy. It just wasn't his thing. You know, if he could have come in at 8.30 or 9, quite frankly, wouldn't even be having this conversation. He wouldn't even be an example. But unfortunately, based on the strict adherence to an attendance policy, regardless of the fact that Dan was an amazing employee, they terminated him. And it just really stuck with me. And it's stuck with me now for, for several years since that took place as to why would we do that? This was, of course, before pandemic. And so this was a time when everybody was working in an office and we, that was our normal thing, right? That, that's what we expected to happen. Another interesting situation, I had a uh, medical practice office manager of nearly 20 years. She was with this practice, took care of everything and everybody, you know, patients loved her. She was the reason why some people would come. Unfortunately, she was diagnosed with cancer. So if anybody has gone through that, like my good friend, Heather, you're going to miss some time at work. <laughs> and especially if you're in a smaller business, you don't have things like FMLA necessarily to, to fall back on. And the, you know, ADA works differently. So unfortunately I had an, uh, this uh, administrator, her name was Ari. They went through the process you know, went through everything, but unfortunately the practice brought in a new administrator and she was ultimately terminated for missing time that was not supported by a doctor's note. These kinds of situations, they happen and they happen daily, unfortunately. And I'm just asking myself why and how can we in HR stop this, this from happening and, and make things better? So just, just take a minute and really think about how did you get into HR? How did you get into your career? Because I think a lot of times we have to kind of look back. We have to remember. I think a lot of people get caught up in the day-to-day -day of what they're doing and they forget. What is our purpose? Why are we here? What are we actually supposed to be doing? So I like to take the time to think about why, why am I here and why did I even get into this? So for me, and yes, I will use almost any excuse to make mentions of, of Ohio State, but so for me, I was a junior at Ohio State and I was pursuing my political science degree and I had every intention of going to law school. I had told people since the time I was little that I was gonna be the president of the United States and that I was gonna be a lawyer and that carried me through high school graduation and beyond. So I am an undergrad at Ohio State they had a cool new minor program in business 
for arts and sciences students. And I said, hey, that's really interesting to me. I will sign up. So as a junior, I was taking an intro to HR class. And friends, when I tell you that I was sitting there and it just clicked, it clicked. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is, you know, so cool. It covered every, you know, facet from, you know, touched a little bit on your, your generalist duties, your comp and benefits, your recruiting, um, you know, engagement, performance management, all the good stuff, right? And it really clicked for me. And I said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with myself. This is, the, you know, this is going to be awesome. So took that, went to grad school, got the master's in HR, and really started you know, started jumping into, into the industry. So for me, the, the best times that I've had and, and the things that really stick out for me are when I have been able to do things that help people. At the end of the day, even if it's as simple as, where do I find my pay stub? How do I change my taxes? How do I change my direct deposit? Um, you know, I, I worked with a uh, client when I was in outsourcing for many years, a, a small business owner who unfortunately had a child who was an adult child who was dealing with substance abuse issues. And he insisted on, you know, keeping her on payroll, just giving her a little bit of money. She didn't work in the business. She wasn't there. She wasn't, but he was so torn. It was so hard for him because this is his child who's, you know, making bad decisions, who's really in a tough spot, but he wanted, he wanted to help her. And so he's, he's on the phone with me and, and getting pretty emotional because he feels like he shouldn't do this. You know, I just, you know, I really shouldn't be floating her and I shouldn't whatever, but this is my kid and I got to take care of her. And, you know, and, and I remember, you know, saying, Ed, it, it's going to be okay. It, it's, it's going to be okay. We will make sure that she gets her, her paychecks. Um, you know, even if, if it's that little bit, if that's what you got to do and that's what's in your heart, that's that's the right thing. And we will help make that happen. You know, he wanted to make sure that nobody else in the company knew about it. He wanted to, you know, and and of course, you know, she, she didn't have bank accounts and whatever. So they were live checks. Um, so to, to be able to do something like that and help somebody through a, a really tough spot or even as simple as, you know, I had the pleasure in my own organization this year to put in benefits for the first time ever in the company's history. In 13 years, we've never had a true benefits package offering. And there are so many people who need it and, and don't have other options. So even to be able to do some of those, you know, some of those things that, that to most of us are just kind of easy and part of the deal, that's what does it for me. And that's what really fills my cup. So I really hope that you'll take the time to think about why you got into it, what you want to be getting out of it. And, and call somebody, talk to somebody, and, and tell them your story. Share that, that, that passion and purpose. So like I said, unfortunately, I, I feel like we just have a lot of, of individuals in our space who are kind of stuck, kind of stuck in the past. And while we can certainly learn from the past, we really need to move forward and we need to appreciate that it is a new day, that the workforce is changing exponentially all the time, and that we as HR have to be agile and mobile and we, we have to adapt to the times and to the people and to our workforce. And again, I understand that there are still a lot of business leaders, business owners, C-suite who don't get this yet. They don't understand they're not necessarily valuing people as the top asset, even if they proclaim to be. So it's really, really tough. And I understand that HR is in between a rock and a hard place a lot of the time. But so part of what I want to do is be a support and offer my support. And then we can offer each other support and help through trying to make this better. So a lot of people, you may resonate with with some of these things. HR has been called all of this, right? Again, back in the day, it was personnel. I think there's a lot of organizations that still just view HR as being very administrative, tactical, pushing that paper, right? Getting to be the policy police, the, the principal's office, and ultimately gotta love that 
you know, we always get the shout out to be the be the party planner, get the events going, you know. And there's there's a lot of of good around all of that, and all of these these things that that we have to do and get to do. But this kind of stigma of HR is still really really concerning. One of the things that has me a little riled up right now is when I see job postings on LinkedIn calling for, you know, heads of HR with five years of experience. We all know, friends, that HR is an experience game. You can have all the certifications, you can have all the degrees, it's all wonderful, it all helps, but none of that is going to teach you what to do when an employee comes into work drunk or high, or with a gun, or bringing bed bugs into the office. All of these things have happened to me, by the way, um, probably most to you as well. There's nothing that I ever read in a book or got in a class that taught me how to deal with that. It was learning from other people who were more experienced and actually going through it, right? So we, we know that HR really is an experience game. But a lot of companies just still don't get it. They, they don't get it. And so I think that the education to our leaders and to our business owners is crucially important. But it's really, really, really difficult, especially those that have been business owners for a long time. I know from experience working with uh, small business owners who they've been in their space for 30 plus years, trying to get them to do new things is, is really, really difficult. Now, what was interesting during the time when I was working with them a lot of them would have their next generation coming up, their kids, their nieces and nephews, their, you know. And those people would pull me aside and they would say things like, I can't wait till dad leaves. When, when mom retires, then we can do cool stuff. You know, we, we, we can actually focus on engagement and culture and, and things like that. Words that don't mean a whole lot to, to these folks because they're just trying to run their business that that's just how it's always been, right? Um, I know having conversations with my parents and even my grandparents about you know the world of work back when when they were, you certainly were not expected to be yourself, right? It really wasn't cool to bring your whole full authentic self to work. So a lot of people are still in that mindset. They're still kind of stuck there. And we need to help them see that people can be themselves and still have great output, be very productive. The company can do extremely, extremely well, even when people are, are being themselves. Anyone else hate some of these phrases that get tossed around when, when you're in the room? Don't say that. HR's here. Or you walk into a room, oh, somebody's getting fired. Not allowed to have any fun. These are some things that we need to stop. You know, when you encounter things like this, you, I, I, I'm encouraging you, take the stand. Look at the person and say, you know what, that's really not necessary. I'm a person too. And I'm an employee. You know, crazy. It doesn't have to be like this, but we have to combat it. We have to, we have to make the statements and we have to say, you know, that's really not how this works, right? Just because I'm here does not mean that bad things are about to happen. It doesn't mean you can't do anything. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are surprised when I tell them that at my last employer, we had a bar with alcohol in the office and, you know, it was something that was very important to to the owner, this was, you know, this was his thing. And quite frankly, I supported it. And a lot of people say, but you're HR. And I said, but I'm a person. And everybody that we hire is an adult. And it's not like everybody was sitting around drinking all day or, you know, being ridiculous. And we had discussions around what was expected, right? But, you know, when we had good things happen or it was somebody's birthday or, you know, whatever, and we had our little, you know, bar area and we'd have our little happy hours and it worked out really, really well. And everyone behaved themselves and, and knew, you know, what was expected. It can be done. It can be done. It is not, not the devil, <laughs> right, to, to do these kinds of things. 
we can have a good time. We can work hard and play hard at the same time, just because we're in HR does not, does not stop that from happening. So when you hear these things and you will, you know, come up with your response, you know, not that, that you're trying to belittle somebody, but just, Hey, that, that, that's really not necessary. That that's not what that means. That's not all I am. Right. So talked a lot about, about where are we now? Okay. And how do we get to where we want to be? So what kinds of things do we have to do as practitioners on a regular basis to move from, you know, kind of some of these old school thoughts and ideals and, and practices and phrases to where we actually want to be? Well, I, I, I have some ideas. I think HR has, has got to do some things and embrace some things. And again, this may be very uncomfortable for, for some people, but we can talk about it, right? We, we've got to have the dialogue. We have to have the conversation. HR has got to bring a level of empathy into the workplace. We have to let people be themselves. We have to be understanding. We cannot just be this rigorous black and white, follow the policy, dot the I, cross the T, and move on and toss good employees out like the, the people that I knew, Dan and Ari, who were outstanding employees, fantastic contributors, going through some stuff in their lives that was, that was affecting their work. Were there easy fixes for those? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all know how expensive it is to turn people over. We know how difficult it is to, to find people and recruit. So why would we take all these steps to get rid of perfectly good employees simply because it's not lining up with a piece of paper? We've got to bring that empathy. We're going to have to step out of our comfort zones. Again, I know this is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. I've had this conversation and certainly as I was working on my draft of my chapter um, through the book, I you know, had different people read it and, and give me perspective. And I you know, had some uh, fellow HR pros who'd been at this a little longer than me. And they said, you know, this is awesome, but just be prepared that some people are not ready to hear this message. This doesn't resonate with everybody yet. But I'm asking everyone to just take even small steps out of your comfort zone. We've got to view employees as real people. As much as we may not like it, we're all people. We've all got stuff, right? You can't just leave it at the door. It's, it's, it's darn near impossible. And for any of us who are parents or caregivers, it, it, it's impossible to turn that off, right? I, I've had both the, hey, your kid is really sick call in the middle of the day, as well as the, mom, I forgot my softball stuff again. We've all been there, right? <laughs> and, and we can't turn a lot of those things off just because we're at work. So we've got to help people find balance, you know? But at the end of the day, is it really going to make the company stop or fall on its heels? because somebody had to go run a lunch to somebody's school, it's probably gonna be fine, right? So instead of dinging people and having, you know, points-based attendance systems and, and employees having to live in fear for being themselves, dealing with their lives, we need to find a way to incorporate these things and, and make it easy on everybody. Again, I really encourage everybody to think back to your purpose. What's your purpose in HR? Why are you there? What are you doing? What are you to the company? If the company only views you as administrative, tactical, plan the party, get the forms filled out, and that's not doing it for you, I encourage you to have a conversation, but also be ready to accept the fact that they may not be there and they may not be ready. And unfortunately, that may mean that you you need to find a, a new a new path, a new place to call home, someplace that really values you, that understands that people really are their greatest asset and they need to take care of them. So I really encourage you. And again, I know that is really, really hard and easier said than done. 
but I see too many HR pros who spend so much time, and I mean years, climbing an uphill battle that they're never going to win. If you don't have that ultimate support from the top down, you're, you're not going to make it so. You're, you're not going to change their minds. Now, if your owner or your leader is getting ready to retire and you see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, maybe it's worth the, it's worth hanging in there, sticking it out. But, but don't be afraid to say, you know what, this doesn't do it for me. This doesn't fill my cup. This is my purpose in working in this fabulous industry. And I need to be somewhere where I can, I can live it out. We've got to get back to basics. Unfortunately, I see a, a lot of HR pros who don't know how to do some of the basic things. If you're an HR pro, you need to be able to answer basic questions on payroll and benefits. That may not be your area per se, but you, in order to be able to help people and help employees, let's not send them on a wild goose chase to every department or, or have them call multiple 800 numbers. Get, let's get educated. Right, any HR person needs to be able to answer some basic stuff, especially regarding payroll and benefits, which to me are the most important things out there. That's why people go to work. Let, let's let's be honest. At the end of the day, you know, how does FMLA work? How does ADA work? Just some of these of these things that that quite frankly, I I consider the HR one hundred and one, and I and I see a lot of of people struggling. Um, let let's let's get back. Let's get back to it. Let's make sure that we're getting our teams trained up. You know, if, you, if you're going to take a, a shot on a very green person, let, let's get them what they need to get to get up to speed. You know, um, we, we've really we've, we've got to get we've got to get back to that. You know, I think that's part of the reason why some of the stigmas are still there is because you do have some some HR people who, who are just doing the administrative and the tactical and, and again, kind of refusing to get out of that comfort zone. We need to understand the why, right? It's not just that we're filling out this form, it's because it's required and here's why, and here's the, the agency that, that does this, or here's the law, you know, and, and really this is how we're going to help educate leaders to see that HR has a really, really strong strategic purpose. Again, with the empathy, we have got to give grace. We have got to give grace to our employees, to our leaders, to each other, to ourselves. Got to give grace, right? Got to figure out ways to make things work for people, even if it's a little unorthodox, even if it's a little outside the box. Let's do what we can to, to make situations work and to really help people give that support, but give people grace. You know, we're, we're all going through stuff, right? We need to advocate. We need to advocate for employees and for ourselves in this industry. I know it, we're always walking that fine line every day, right? Between the, the company and the employees and, you know, where does the loyalty lie? And that's really, really difficult, really tough, right? But we do have to advocate for the employees. And when we're when we're swinging too far on the, the the company side and the corporate side, and not as much advocacy for the employees, it shows. It shows. So really need to kind of let's give ourselves that check and say, hey, am I am I in tune with the people? Do I know what they actually want and need? You know, when's the last time I I scheduled time just casually with employees? When's the last time I went and walked around the plant? hung out at the store, whatever your your industry is. Make sure that you're doing that and that you're really in tune with, with the people and, and what they need and what's going on. And then finally, we, we really have to take more of a consultative approach to our HR practice. It can't always be black and white, here it is, you know, yes, no, a um, lot of no. There are some situations that are going to be black and white. Right, we didn't we didn't write the laws, but we know how to play the game. We we know how these things work. But there's a lot of situations where you can give options. And at the end of the day, HR is really about mitigating risk. So instead of, well, you can't do that. Okay, you can do that, and here's what might happen. Or we could do this, and here's what might happen. How much risk are we willing to take on? Right, given given the situation. 
if you present that to your leaders and give them more options, as well as the consequences, right, and then the potential outcomes, you'll have a much better result. You'll also start to be more respected and really looked at as that trusted business partner, as opposed to the HR person who's just always saying no. Because at the end of the day, it's their business. It's your business too, but it's their business. They can run it pretty much how they see fit, barring any, any illegal action. And they have to be they have to be ready to take on the risk and understand what what might happen. I know those of us that led through the pandemic. God bless you all for doing that. We definitely earned our stripes and our capes and crowns and everything else through that time. But for me, there was a lot of that. I was dealing with a lot of small business owners all at once, and some of them wanted to do really bad things. I'd use the pandemic as an excuse. And I said, okay, well, you can do that, but here's what might happen. And one of them that I warned, um, he fired an employee against my advice and she sued. And I told him, <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen, you know? And he was willing to take that risk and, and he had to go through that. Sometimes all we can do is advise and, and consult and then, you know, be there to, to support. So what I'm really asking for HR now is let's focus on people, let's focus on great experiences at work, and let's really focus on relationships with each other. We all need to be supporting each other, and you need to have your, your 3 a.m. HR people, but really the relationships between HR and employees and leaders, because they, that's really what means so much at the end of the day. I really believe, and I have seen it, that great HR really makes great organizations. And I know that you do too, because that's why you're doing this. Uh, we know that some leaders are, are bad leaders. Some business people are bad business people. And there's gonna be some things that are gonna happen. But when you have great HR and you can say, I do great work, my team does great work, it's, it's gonna make a tremendous impact on an organization that's ready to do that. So I wanna share just a little bit about my personal story that has really affected my life, my work. So this is my youngest daughter, Emily. She just turned 13. Emily has autism and intellectual disabilities. Cognitively, she's about three. She's, she's about a toddler, and that's about what we're going to be able to expect for, for the foreseeable future. She is a wonderful kid. She loves everything that has to do with Disney, swimming, riding her bike, get her outside, and she's happy. Um, recently, she's taken up bowling, did a couple field trips at school, and so we took her for her, her birthday. She is, she, she's a great kid and she, she really is a light in the world. She's happy, everybody knows her. We randomly go to stores in our area and people stop and say hi to Emily and we're like, we have no idea who you are. Um, you know, she just, it, it feels like the paparazzi. But she's a wonderful kid. But going through this and being the parent of a special needs child has been extremely difficult. It has weighed on me as obviously as a wife and a mother, as an employee. When we started out and we were kind of trying to figure out what was going on with this kid and, and trying to get a diagnosis. And if anybody else has been through this, it's a lot of testing. It's a lot of doctors. We then were advised, you know, hey, you guys really should be going to Cincinnati, which is two hours from us in Columbus because they really have a more developed autism program down there at, at their hospital. So multiple times a year, making the two hour there, two hour back, you know, trek. Um, it's been a lot, it, it, it's, it's really been a lot. And, you know, while, while she's wonderful and there's so many wonderful things that, that have come from this and I'm still, 
kind of wait, you know, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait, obviously, until I get in, in front of God and have have the sit down with, with some questions about the why and, and all of this. But I know that there's a greater purpose to this. I know that, you know, I'm supposed to be learning a lot of things through this. But this has been really, really taxing and really, really difficult. And I, I share that and I, I don't try to put on the happy face that everything is great all the time. This past week, we had her annual um, IEP meeting. That's kind of our state's plan for, for her. That's a really tough day for me every year to sit through for an hour with her teachers who love her and adore her. And we purposely moved and built a house in a more, in a um, stronger school district that, that was better for her. But it's really, really tough to sit there and think about all the things your kid can't do and, you know, the things that, that, she's, that she's not doing, um, especially compared to our oldest, um, Avery, who is recently, she's a new driver, she's a competitive dancer, she plays softball, um, you know, she's, she's involved in everything and kind of the total opposite, right, of, of what, we've, what we've been dealing with with Emily for all these years. But this is really, really tough for us, for, for my husband and I, um, for our extended family, this, this is a really difficult thing. I share a lot of this and, and I've always shared it in my work situations because I want people to understand where I'm coming from. This isn't about, you know, oh, poor you, or, you know, trying, trying to gain a lot, of, a lot of sympathy. This is about, this is my life. I deal with this on a daily basis. And if there are some days like IEP review day that are really, really difficult for me, I make sure that my, my closest coworkers know that and say, hey, if something seems off, this is what I'm dealing with. You know, um, it, it, it has affected me. It, it has affected every aspect of, of my life, of my husband's life. It's been really, really, really hard. But as an employee, and as someone in HR, I feel like it's really important to share and for people to understand that this is what I'm dealing with and this is what I'm going through. And I have found so many people have come forward and say, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing because I'm going through this too. Or, you know, I'm dealing with, with something similar. Your people are going through stuff. I guarantee it, right? Your, your people are going through stuff. And we don't have to put on the the tough person facade and just try to power through just because we're at work, right? Um, I can't leave this at the door every day. I just can't. And so I've been very blessed to be in work environments where people have been extremely understanding and said, you know, hey, you know, whatever you need, we're here from you from a professional and, you know, from a, from a personal perspective. But it really changes. Once you know something about like this about somebody, it really changes your, your perception. So all I ask is that we in the, in the HR space, we, we think about these things. If someone is acting in a way that is not normal, not usual for them, you know, coming in late, leaving early, I guarantee something else is going on. I, I, I can promise you. And most of us have probably learned that over the course of our careers. It's always about something else. We need to not just look at the surface, but we really need to dig deep. You've got to ask the tough questions, right? To figure out what's going on with people, allow them to be themselves. How can we help and support you, you know, through this so that you can still shine and thrive in your work life? So what's going to happen with our next generation of HR pros? I don't really know, <laughs> to be honest. But I love any opportunity that I have to speak to them, to help mentor them. I encourage all of you to do the same. Or if you are in, you know, maybe a, a more junior part in, in your career, you know, have those conversations. Seek out those who have been doing this for a long time. Even some of the stories are epic and you, and you can learn so much just from things like that. 
I think that we, as the the first, you know, kind of generations in, in some of this new day of, of HR, we really, again, we, we have to lead the pack and we've got to help the, the newer generations coming up to not pick up some of the bad habits, but to learn the very people-centric way of practicing and of helping to educate the leaders on the real value of, of HR and what we really, really bring to the table. I want to thank you all so, so much for being here today. This has been so much fun. Um, this is my contact information. When I say that I want to connect with you and please reach out to me if you need anything, I'm not kidding. And I'm, I will not ignore you and you will not ever hear from me. Um, let's get together. Let's talk. Let me help you. If you need anything, if you need other people in your area to, to connect with, here's my email. I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, if you haven't attempted the Twitter world with, within the HR community, I promise you it's really, really cool and fun and very supportive. Um, I had never been a Twitter person until 2017. And then I got into it and I have literally met people in HR from around the globe, which has been really, really cool. So really encourage you to, to do that. Reach out, let's connect. I, I again, like Sierra mentioned about my, my blog, I'm really there to just talk about things that are important to HR people and, and really offer that support. And if you're interested in checking out the book, you can actually do so right from my, my blog page. And I do um, give portions of proceeds to organizations that specifically support the autism community. So Sierra and company, thank you so much for, for having me. This has been awesome. If there's any questions or any discussion anybody wants to have, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Thank you, Christy. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, we will also link her book and uh, the blog in the follow-up. So you'll get kind of routed to a landing page and you'll have the slides and recording and um, all of Christy's resources there. So if you're frantically trying to write it down, <laughs> we'll share. Um, we do have a, a, a couple questions that have come in. What are some good resources that you would recommend to help learning more about general HR duties, especially if you're not in a position that allows you to learn that right now? Um, you know, and, and I, sh I should have included this this year. I can send, um, I actually have a chart that I put in a lot of my other presentations that have a lot of, um, of resources. But especially, you know, a lot of us who are in smaller and, and mid-sized businesses, we don't have massive professional development budgets. And so going to some of the big conferences and things like that is not an option for a lot of people, which I totally appreciate. What you can do, though, there are so many good books to, to read, but there's even more podcasts and blogs and things where you can learn in, in shorter and smaller amounts. I know for me, small business, hair on fire a lot. It's hard to sit down and read a whole book. It, it you know, really, really is to, to find the time to do that. So a, a blog article or a, a short podcast is, is a lot of times a better option. I have a whole list of those that, that I'm happy to share. And then for me personally, it's, it's having my people. So, you know, either join an HR Unite local group, which is, is totally free. Check out hrunite.com. Um, you know, just finding some ways to to connect and, and network that are authentic and genuine. Um, you know, if you if you know nobody and, and you're like, I, I don't even know where to start, reach out to me. We'll start something. And, and I guarantee I probably can find you some people, um, you know, somewhere. So but but that's a really common thing too, especially for those of us who are in smaller businesses, it's hard because you feel like you're on an island a lot of the time. And it's it's really, really hard to find to find those resources. And again, not everybody can can be a member of every organization or go to conferences and things like that. But um, Sierra, I will send you that um, chart that I have um, that has some has some stuff on it. That would be great. Yes, we're happy to share. 
um, and feel free to connect also with anybody on this webinar. I know some people have dropped their links, um, so feel free to do that and keep the conversation going as well. So we're happy to be part of your network also. Um, awesome. All right, and if there, we have just a few more minutes. If anybody has any more questions, feel free to throw them in. If not, <clears throat> I will go ahead and take back over here. We have a few more uh, nuggets to share with you. So, oops, all right. So first up, before we sign off um, and answer any last questions, I'm gonna um, and share those credit codes. I wanna make sure you're all connected to our monthly newsletter, HR Caffeine. Each month we gather top articles and trends and advice and share it with 400 plus leaders. Um, the next edition is coming out next week. So it's the great time to sign up and you can find that at starhr.com slash resources. Okay, and then here are your recertification codes. It's available for one credit. So here is for HCRI and SHRM. I'm gonna see if I can drop that in the chat also so you can just copy those. So. Um, here we go. Those are dropped into the chat. If you miss them or for some reason it doesn't work, just reach out to me. Um, but there are your codes. <laughs> okay. And I don't see any other questions coming in. So we'll go ahead and thank Christy. Thank you so much, Christy, for sharing your time with us and your expertise and um, all those resources. Uh, so many things to share. I'm really excited about um, sending out this follow up. I know lots of people will be waiting for it. So thank you so much. And thank you all for joining you, us. Um, we're excited to have you back here in May for our next webinar. There'll be more, more details coming out about that next week. So stay tuned. Um, and if there's no other questions, we will um, say goodbye and wish everybody a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you.